Dog and Baseball. We are doing our live event. Oh, we're in Seattle. Let's talk ball. Let's talk ball. You got to throw it to me. Get out of here. Uh, First gift. No. Oh. This feels right. This feels right. It's nice. I like it. Hello Very. and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by SeatGeek. We are live in Seattle at Optimism Brewing. We have 200 beautiful faces here joining us. Oh my God. We are. Uh, we are having so much fun. The Home Run Derby last night, my favorite event in sports, because uh, everybody's rooting for the same thing, which probably says too much about me. <laughs> it's kind of not sports at the end of the day. Uh, I am joined by today. I'm missing my handsome friend, Jimmy. Yeah. He's coming. He just sent me his schedule for him coming back part-time, so he's, okay. he's locked in. I am joined, this is an episode of Talkin' Baseball Today, ah, as I am joined by Chris Rose and Trevor Plouffe. Yeah. Thank you. Rosie, how are you? I am doing great. I'm doing great. I've had the good fortune of covering, oh boy, uh, uh -oh. almost 20 All-Star games. Uh, this is the first one I've covered in Seattle, and it has been unbelievable. Okay. So to all of you native Seattleans or whatever, what do we call you? Seattleites? Seattleites? Give yourselves a hey. round of applause. It's a beautiful so, city. It's awesome. We've had a great time. Really good stuff. <laughs> Trevor Goof. What's up, guys? Hey, yeah, we're having a great time. You know, the first night we went out all together, uh, Jake, Chris Rose, myself, and beautiful Jess out there, and we ate at a, a great Japanese restaurant, mm -hmm. and, and just, we've been all over the city. Last night, yeah. C. Rose and I were rubbing elbows with Ken Griffey Jr. Yes. Yeah. You guys probably know who that is, <laughs> ball player. That was crazy, dude. You just keep dropping, <laughs> just keep dropping Seattle people. <laughs> it was Griffey. It was Macklemore. He was not there. <laughs> Edgar swung so by popular? for one. He has a billion views on one of his videos. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't Macklemore's. I'm into. It. I like Let's the not song. do Macklemore okay, early. Okay. We got to talk some ball, uh, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk some big picture stuff. Not always me, Rosie, and Trev get together and talk some ball. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna take some questions from yes. the audience. So get we'll see what we got. We know. We know. You got a question, right? Okay. Later. Later. <laughs> uh, I want. It's I wanted to aim joke. out wide. We we've hit the All Star break. Mm -hmm. Update from me. Um, the second half is coming, and it's, it's an interesting part of the season. I, we've got fans of, like, I don't know, 20 teams are represented here? We'll Easily. go around the room later. Easily. Um, and, you know, my Braves guy over that. I don't know if we need to talk Braves right now. You guys are. Uh, congratulations. You, you guys are sitting pretty. Uh, I don't know if I've seen any Royals fans. We may not have to deep dive on them today. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Abe. What you, I mean, really. Abe. Hey, we just had a great Vinny Pasquantino uh, episode on the Rose Rotation. So double, there you go. Double birds. There you go. Made. That'll have it covered. That's enough. We'll talk Wait, to you soon. Wait, hold on. And Vinny's. <laughs> Vinny is coming on baseball today. That's right. Yeah, He's going to be Friday. filling in for Ploof on Friday. Yeah, that's good. That'll be fun. Because I'm over it. I and said, Chris, I'm not doing it. Active major leaguer appearing on one of our shows not bad. as kind of What's an that analyst. What's supposed to mean? What's you're that supposed to mean? You're not active. Did you turn in your retirement papers? I haven't, actually. Trevor Plouffe's returning to the MLB, everybody. Uh, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Well, Breaking oh news. God, can you imagine? If uh, that happens, that would be the most exciting part of my second half of the baseball season. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm a little pep pessimistic. Pepto-mystic. Yes. I'm a little pessimistic. As we're at Optimism Brewing, thanks. Shout out to this place, man. This is a perfect setup. When cool we, place. Great venue. When we plan stuff like this, like we're just looking at Google Maps and being like, I think this will work. And doing like the little internal walk around. Uh, and it has worked, and they've been awesome. So thank you. Chris Rose, I'll yes. start with you because you're more professional than my friend over there. Not true. Second half true. is coming. What are you most looking forward to as a team or as a second half of the season? Can those rich kids get back in the action? Yes. In New York and in San Diego in particular. Yeah. Because if not, in two weeks, are we going to be talking about them being sellers? There was no way when this season started that anybody in this room thought that 
either of those teams would be sell. Raise your hand if you thought the Mets or Padres was going to sell at the beginning of the season. You're lying, Isaiah. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> do not lie. No, you're a Braves fan. I know yeah. you're a Braves fan, but don't do that to me. Do not do it. I won't accept it. There is I'm a, watching you the rest of the night. There's a slight, I mean, Braves fan, there's a little Mets caveat there. But, no, your point stands. Yeah, and it bothers me. It does bother me a little bit because we're all trying to figure out what the hell has happened to these two teams. In New York, I love it when the Mets players, they come out and they're like, yeah, we just have to do better. We have to do, no shit you got to do better. <laughs> your, your owner spent a half a billion dollars on your team this year with taxes. Will you please do better? And then there's Buck Showalter walks out to the mound with his hands down his pants. You know, half the time. You didn't need to act it out. <laughs> we don't need that. We, we got a live audience. That. He didn't have to act it out. You told me that HR was not represented <laughs> they're, they're here today. Not. I'm, I'm currently our HR Oh, my here. God. The company is really screwed. So I want to see if these two teams, they, I, they literally have 10 to 14 days to get their shit together or there's going to be a real problem. And I don't want to see them sell. I don't think it's good for the sport. These teams spent a ton of money. They gave their fan bases exactly what they want. And then if... If it doesn't work out, then you're going to have Rob Manfred and a bunch of other owners say, see, it doesn't work to actually put money into teams. We want everybody to spend $60 million on payroll. Yeah. I don't want to see well, that. Well, then you can always just point to the Dodgers, right? They yeah, do, they they've do been pretty good. Well. They've been pretty good. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's funny because I've been talking to a bunch of Padres fans here, and every time I get on social media and we start to talk Padres or in our comments section, whatever it is, Padres fans are very negative. And they say, have you watched him play? There's no fire there. Uh -huh. There's no leadership. You, I mean, they make uh, the mental lapses are there. And it's like, okay, like I get that. But we had a conversation. And in person, I feel like everyone's probably a little bit more optimistic. I think there's so much talent there uh, that they're going to have to go. I mean, there's no, there's no way around it. And I do think, whether this is stupid or not, and uh, I'll let Jake decide that, mm. them winning the series against the Mets... Like, I feel like that is just, that's the momentum that they need, right? And maybe on the flip side for the Mets, losing that series was like, shit. I think Mets fans are in it worse than Padres fans. Hmm. Mm, who's got it worse? Yeah. Uh, Jolly, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I mean, if the Mets, the Mets can still click, obviously. It's why they have so much talent. It's why we hype them up in the offseason. The Padres, it, just, it still doesn't make sense. Their starting pitching has been so good. Their defense grades out good. And if you look at the top five hitters in their lineup, you're like, wait, this, this could be an all-star team. That, I don't know, they're, they're kind of the team I can't quit where also the Mets and Jolly's out of ear range right now. They have a history of like, eh, I don't know. Like, the Mets can get Metsy on you. So, uh, I don't know. I still hold out hope for the Padres. I know we, uh, we already recorded, and it comes out Friday, we did uh, Stolen from the Chris Rose rotation. Yeah. We did the trade deadline draft. Uh, me, Rosie, Trev, and Jolly. Uh, and we each drafted players, and you guess where they go. I still think the Padres do some sort of we believe in our team. Huh. I, think, I think they do some sort of small ads where the Mets... They're going to have a funky deadline, man. I, I think they're going to trade away a couple veterans, and they'll spin it as we needed a shakeup. But if you're the Mets, I, I don't think there's any – there's no go. There's no – it's about to click. Where the Padres fans, they're, like, thirsty. Like, mm. if they sweep a series, I think they think we're going to go. Interesting. What do you have as your big second half look ahead to? I wanted to talk about a team that is mirroring their season from last year. And last year was a pretty good season for them. Are you any Phillies fans? Phillies? Yeah. Oh. No Phillies. No Phillies fans. fans. Was that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Be Jess. proud about it. Jess, you're a Phillies fan. Nice. Yeah, we got right. one. Okay. Handsome guy Jess is sitting next to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is handsome. That's fine. Jeez. I'm sick of all those handsome guys. Um. For me, the Phillies are the team that I want to watch because they are sort of mirroring uh, what they did last year. They're starting to go a little bit. And if you look at the overall numbers, I have some up on my phone right here. Uh, the guys have, like, been okay. Bryce Harper, do you guys know how many home runs Bryce Harper's hit? Three. Three fucking home runs, dude. That's not, that's not real, no. right? And I know he's dealing with some stuff, and he's trying to play first base, practicing a lot there. Maybe just... 
don't do that anymore. I don't know. But there's so many guys there that are kind of having okay years, or in Trey Turner's situation, yeah. he's turned it on a little bit, but it's, it's very far below his career averages. Even JT Real Muto, 107 OPS plus, Alec Bohm, 106, Bryce Stott, 108. A bunch of guys just write it like league average. But I feel like there's room for them to grow. And even on their pitching staff, too. Like, Wheeler's pitched to a four. Nola's pitched to a four. They've had good outings, too. But I like the staff. Uh, Taiwan Walker's been better than advertised. Um, Ranger Schwartz is there. Like, they're a team that, like, I think it's going to be really good. And all of a sudden, we're going to be looking up. They're going to get in the wild card spot because the freaking Braves are going to run away with the division. Yeah. And they're just going to do the exact same thing. Dude, I have them in the World Series against the Yankees. That was preseason. <laughs> Yankees are another story. But I, 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 I just think that... If you're looking at teams, someone to bank on, like having a really nice second half, yeah, I think it's the Phillies. Well, they've already started that in yes, the last six yes, weeks. There yes. aren't a lot of teams that have a better record in baseball than the Phillies. That's, but that's what I'm saying. Like it happened last June, it happened this June, and here we go. Yeah. You see I, Rob I, Thompson's shirt that he he came to the also. He told oh. Zach Gallon he was getting the shirt. It was very. I didn't know Topper had that. It was very. Yeah. I gotta check it out now. Yeah. Can we get You'd that like up? It. Phillies, Phillies aren't scared of anything. Like we, we use that in sports a lot, but if the Phillies show up in the playoffs because they did it last year, and literally the attitude on that team, I commented on Twitter. It was a little late night, maybe too late night for me to be commenting, but uh, they came back. Who was it? Pache hits the yeah. two-run homer. Mm-hmm. And who's the first guy out of the dugout? It's Harper, man, because that guy, that guy is one of the best competitors baseball has seen. Oh, my gosh. And I... <laughs> that stuff matters, Trev. That's a tough shirt. <laughs> like, it's, it's a bad look. Yeah, he's like, he's old, but he's trying to be young. That's, that's not what you want to do. That's kind of where Ladies I'm Ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh. word of advice, do not get dressed in the dark. Oh, <laughs> that's what happens. I mean, you guys can't see it, that's but brutal. it's brutal. Uh, how'd you get, find this? Just uh, Google it, it. Well, I tweeted about it yesterday. And <laughs> Alex Coffey put out Philly Rob at the All-Star Game. Yeah. <laughs> this shirt's tough. That's okay. Philly, baby. Yeah, That's okay. Philly. Okay. Uh, I want to see which, which young team kind of wins us over, whether that's at the deadline or that's playing better ball. Is it my snakes in the desert? Mm. Do they? Let's go. Can I tell you something that's going to make you mad? Okay. I hung out with Corbin Carroll a lot yesterday. Really? Yeah. How was he? Awesome. Yeah. He was at the uh, Seattle's party? finest too, right? Yeah. Okay. Shout out Corbin Carroll because he's obviously having a great year. Yeah. Uh, the sh- I asked him about the shoulder. He said, I'm all right. He's good. He's good, yeah. Did you he's offer good. to rub his shoulder? I would have. that's something you would probably Let do. Let me tell you, we think he's, you call him a short king? Listed 5'10", no? I, I give him like 5'11". Like he's he's <laughs> nice. taller than I thought. <laughs> Taller than I thought. Nice. And I think that's where the power comes from. I, on TV, he looks small, but he's I mean, like pretty big. Yeah, obviously, dude. he would have zero power if he was 5'10", but yeah. now he's 5'11". Yeah, no, but oh, he's, big, he's bigger it's in ridiculous. person. I mean, my God. It's ridiculous. He's bigger in person. Will, the, will the snakes win us over? Will the Orioles kind of actually win everyone over? Okay, the birds. Orioles have already... That, that skit's done. Like, they're good. They're good, but... who? Who here has the Orioles winning the World Series? Nobody until they make a trade not, for a no. guy at the top of the rotation. And and even the Orioles not the fan. Guy, not the guy dressed in the pajamas just, over and here. And why do you have OxyClean? He's what is going whole, on? He's what is in that? the bird outfit. That is a good one. I like the bucket hat, though. Um, that thing is awesome. Fan Fest. Fan Fest. <laughs> fan Fest. Or the Marlins. Trev, you've been on the Marlins. Been on the Marlins. They're, you know, we're these Mariners... If the Mariners season gets ugly, no, these we're, turn, no, these we're turn so to Marlins optimistic here in Seattle. Oh, you love the Mariners. You oh. won't pronounce them dead. No. Um, <laughs> that I, I think I think one of those teams is either going to make a big deadline move and win over the nation, like, oh, the Birds went out and they got Dylan Cease, or, oh, you know, the Marlins, they finally got that hitter they've been waiting for. And I think that's going to win over the baseball community. Or one of those teams just keeps winning and we say, damn, like, the birds with Adley Rushman, like you're saying, Rosie, they don't really lose, but I think they need that next step for everyone to be like, mm-hmm. I believe. So th- in the American League, who is the team to beat? That's a good question. Rays, you think? I mean, the Rays by this time next week might not be in first place in their division. It's two games. As great as they were, that amazing start they got off to. The unbelievable first half that a lot of their offensive players put up, they have a two-game lead over the Orioles. So in the National League, we know it's the Atlanta Braves. That's the yeah. team to beat. And yeah. then even the, you know, the Dodgers, they finally got into first place technically on the last day of the first half of the season. We wouldn't be shocked if they make a couple of deals, add some bullpen arms, maybe strengthen that rotation, and then all of a sudden 
You're like, okay, they're the Dodgers, so they're going to hang around. But in the American League, there's not one team, including the defending World Series champion Houston Astros, because all the injury issues that they've had, where you're like, yeah, they're definitely the team to beat. They're not one. I, I kind of agree with you. Statistically, it's probably the Rangers. Like They do everything kind of well. They need an, at Some least bullpen. one more reliever yeah. outside of Chapman, if but, not but two. When I think of the Rangers, I don't think – like. Braves level, like probably going to no. be in the World Series. You don't think that way, but nope. you know you're right. The trade deadline can change a, a, a team in an instant. By the know? way, I think that's great for baseball. I think it's great. I just don't want to see all these GMs pucker up on July 31st as they get ready for the last few hours of the deadline. Like, make some moves. I love seeing it as a baseball fan. What do you mean pucker up? That they are that they get so scared What's of trading. Up? You know what that means. Oh, okay. I didn't. I just... Come on, big boy. There's just one There's one thin wall keeping the three of us apart in our Airbnb. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Let's go easy on the By the way, Trev's been on top the entire trip. <laughs> sure has. No, there's all, what are you people talking about? There's only one room upstairs. That's, That's what room. I was talking about. There's just a... Key. By the way, when we got back last night from the party, Trev had a few... Pops a last few, night, right? Few, just a few. And he was all pissed off. He comes in, he starts kicking the shoes of the wall. I was like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Like, this isn't the frat house. People are sleeping. And he goes upstairs, and all, you must have heavy shit up there because you were dropping stuff on the floor. I dropped a water bottle. Is I that what that. it was? Yeah. But how many times? A couple. <laughs> <laughs> Put it this way, uh, when I talked to Olivia in the morning. Oh, God. Well, that's not What's that about? <laughs> She's hot. There's no doubt about it. Um, you didn't call her 248, did you? No, I gave her a text. Um, when I got up in the morning and I FaceTimed her and our kids, she's like, wow, someone was drinking red wine last night. And I was like, what the fuck? She's like, watch me or something? And she's, she goes, your lips are extremely purple. So, yeah. yeah, that's where I was at last night. Yeah, they're still there, by the way. It might be. No, no, yeah, it's, it's it is. Tough. Okay. Yeah. We're washing it I might off. try brushing your teeth somebody. occasionally. I did brush my teeth. Not my, I should have brushed my lips. Ale favorite? Mm, tough. Yeah, it is. It's, it is tough. I just... People that were watching, I kind of got lost because for the past three hours, I was like, what should we talk about? And then Chris Rose asked easily the best question. Because That's what he does. That's what he does. It's either Houston or the Rays. I guess I would lean Rays. They've been better, and they've been to a World Series. I don't know. I would lean Rays. I am going to say the Baltimore Orioles, if an OxyClean dude's so happy, <laughs> if they make a trade for a guy I consider to be a top-of-the-rotation he doesn't have to match Garrett Cole. I think Spencer Strider is where, there. Where do you draw like, a line? Dylan Cease counts? Dylan Cease is, is You said yesterday close. you don't want Dylan Cease on the Orioles because he walks too many people. That's what you said. But he does walk too many people. That doesn't mean he's not a good pitcher. You can be both. It's not mutually okay. exclusive. He does walk a lot of people. Okay. Bieber's not. <laughs> I love Shane Bieber. He's not the difference maker. Really? Yeah, Stroman Stroman's would be great. Stroman's interesting. Strowman. Blake Snell's oh, really gosh. interesting. Those oh. are those Why are guys you I would say consider. That? You're a Padres fan. It's <laughs> a Padres fan. Why would you say yeah. that? It's pa over. Padre fans we have been worn out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they they say it's over. Well, say, oh man. Can we, can we get to the the big O? Oh no. Oscar Any? Robertson? No. <laughs> Trades? Where yeah. We're, yeah, that's okay. That Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Is there any Angels So fans I was here? about to segue it pretty good. And, you know, a lot of trade talk has just come up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, sometimes, sometimes getting the click is right. Who is the biggest player traded at this deadline? Because we've snuck up. We're in Seattle. Our Mariners are above 500. They're clear. <laughs> Mariners clear. Based, right? Based. Based we, uh, is good. Based I is learned good. I learned how to use the word clear, like the the Utes are using it, so I've been using it a lot. I keep saying Gwen Stefani clears, and yeah, everyone yeah, just like kind of looks at me like, "All right, man." <laughs> uh, <laughs> who, Chris Rose? I, I again, I will kick it to you because I I think the audience might get rowdy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are we gonna? Should we give away no. one of our picks? Because so, this is coming out on Friday, our yeah. trade deadline thing. We we both had a big name going. Yes. Well, who was your biggest one? Do you don't have to say who it was. I guess Do you, you don't have to. Yeah. Well, let's, I, give, let's give away one of them. Well, I a think teaser up. I think Rose. I think Rosie starts because he's 
Chris Rose isn't doing it for a clip. Chris Rose no. has seen a lot of sports. Chris Rose believes in this. Who will be the biggest player traded at the deadline? I love it. You just called me old. Oh, that yeah. was so awesome. Uh, this, you said this You've is your, seen a lot of sports. This is your 46 All-Star game. You said it at the start of the show. <laughs> I was around when they used to play two of these things. <laughs> um, Google it. It happened. Uh, <laughs> So I'm not going to say, here's what I would say about Otani. Artie Moreno reportedly does not want to, <laughs> Artie Moreno reportedly does not want to trade him because he doesn't want to be the owner that might be known for trading away the greatest talent that the sport has ever seen. If your job is to own a team and make it better, why wouldn't you trade him? Like, well, there's one okay, big reason. If you there's were Artie Moreno, reason. if you were Artie Moreno, raise your hand if you would trade Shohei Otani. Yeah. Okay, now I want to see why, if you would you not trade him. Brain? I want to just get a – so it's probably like two, <clears throat> at least two-thirds. So why don't you guys want to trade him? I don't understand it. Because I want him to play for my team for the next 10 years. But this is – there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. I know that I get it, people. But listen, I, we were just talking up there. And this is, I, I truly think this is going to happen with Shohei Otani. I don't care what happens with him this season. If he stays, if he goes, it doesn't matter. I think the team that gets him in free agency at the end of the year is the team that gets the most creative with their contract. I, I don't think it's the team that offers him the most money. He, everyone's going to offer this dude $60 million a year. Not everybody. I, I'm not, every team that approaches him that is real about it is going to offer him $60 million a year. I now, that's not so. every team in the league, but every team that's in on him, that's what they're going to have to start at. It's going to have to start 10 years, 600. So I think a team's going to come in, and he's going to look at what Messi just did with the MLS and all of his little contractual caveats, and I think it's going to take that. I think if you come in and you're, and you're a team and you said, let's get funky with this thing. Like, let's right. figure some things out. So maybe you're not on the books for that much money, but there's a chance you can make a lot more. I think it's going to take something like that to differentiate yourself from the pack if you're going after Otani. So Shohei Otani in his next contract is going to, for every click on Peacock with his new team. Something, man. That he's going to, there, like, what, there are teams that own the regional sports networks, right? Uh, barely. Just saying. <laughs> barely these days. Well, why wouldn't you trade him? I don't. I. I can't get past this. You. You would rather have the forty-six so, pick as a compensatory pick in next year's draft. The Mariners, who reminder I just said clear, sick, sick, bro. Uh, the Angels are half game back of them. A game back. Yeah, but they've lost thirteen to seventeen. And right, Mike, but Mike you, just had a, and you just had a ton of injuries. You had your whole infield catcher and Mike Trout, who was the best player until someone came across the pond and was better at him than everything he does. Right. That, like, you went all in for this year. You can't, you're at 500. You can't go down with the ship that you're giving up. And in sports, it's two months of baseball. Could the Angels have a great two months? With the team they've got right now? No. Yes, they could. No. Yes, they could. They could. No way. Yes, they could. Most people are with me. Who thinks the Angels are worth anything right now as a team? Anybody? Oh, my goodness. No. You guys are mean. We're not mean. We're being realistic here. We're talking about running a business. But why can't they go on a run? Because they stink. That's why. Because they stink. <laughs> I, know, I wish they – how many times have I told you on baseball today, outside of the Guardians, the Angels are the team I root hardest for. Sure. So it, you make it sound like, oh, you love this, Rose. I don't. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it that we have two of the best players in the sport who have to sit on the sidelines when the games are most important. That sucks about this sport. Everyone wow. hates that. Everyone That's... hates that, though. Obviously. Yeah, but no, you don't hate it because I want to see Shohei Otani play in October. Well, you guys are like, well, maybe already can convince him to stick around for, you know, a little oh, I don't. Longer. I don't think he's staying. I no. think the Angels could stay sneak into a wild card this year, I don't think Shohei is staying. So wait a second. If you think that he's leaving town, why wouldn't you trade him? Because I want to get into the wild card and I want to make a run at the playoffs with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. I don't. What, I don't are, what are some examples of that? No, nothing's been on Shohei's level, but like, okay, let's think about people who got traded. Seattle traded Ken Griffey Jr., right? Trev. They, they, they did. Did but they trade had, him? Yes, they did, but it was 10 years into his career. Sure. Well, we don't talk not, about not that prime. in not, not in his prime. Yeah. We don't talk about that here. It's exactly. That's it, my point. Like, stuff like that lingers, dude. That lingers for your organization. Randy Johnson's a good example. So, Randy Johnson got traded to Houston as a rental. And I don't know if you guys remember ever seeing the video, but, like, he was shocked because there were 
rumors that they were going to sign him. Uh, and Lou Pinella comes up to him, I think, in the dugout and whispers something to him. And he's shocked. Like, he's like, holy shit, I can't believe I just got traded. And sure enough, that was it. And that's not even – he was just a pitcher. He didn't hit 50 bombs in a year. So, I don't know. I, I just think they're making a huge mistake – for the future of their organization if they don't trade them. Huge. I can see both sides, too. Honestly, yes. what, what's the return going to be like for Otani? Do you Better mean, than the 46 pick in the draft. It, it might be. Where'd they no. get Mike Trout? They'll get a return. I'm just saying. You they're think, not going to trade them. You think they're going to get one, two, three prospects? Like first, second, third? They're not. They might. They're not. Okay. Trev, you, uh... Well, well. you mentioned a guy that... Do you, oh. do you think this guy will be traded? Or do you think you talking, there's a chance this guy will be traded? Hot takes only. Are you talking <laughs> about... Who are you talking about? He got traded last year. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, so my big one I had going in this uh, episode, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a little teaser out there. And sorry, guys. Yeah, we talked about it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the Padre fans aren't shocked, man. Juan Soto. He's got to run this year, and he's got to hold another year next year. That's how you maximize the return. Okay, would you, do you think Otani brings back more, or Juan Soto, if he gets traded this year, brings back more? Otani. You think? Yeah, I don't think it's close. You're I don't trading think so. for, yes, I because you're trading so. for a pitcher and a hitter. A rental. A rental. You okay. have, you're getting a year plus of, of Juan Soto. I mean, I don't know. It's not that much more. Anyways, okay. Let's get off Otani. Okay. Juan Soto to me is a guy, look, if the Padres are middling at the deadline and um, looking to retool, because they can't blow the thing up. They just signed a bunch of people for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should I tell them? No, you got to watch Friday's it's, episode. It's not a, it's a... Um, I'll tell you an answer that's not real, the New York Yankees. Why would, why would, why, why would they want the, why would they want the Hall of Fame left fielder? That would hit 50 home runs a season there for the next decade. I would, that used to be my Yankees. Yeah, it's not them. Sorry. <laughs> Stefani it's, Clears. It's like the exact opposite of the Yankees, actually, where I think he's going to go. You know what I don't like? You're, you're not being consistent. Why? Okay, here because we go. Okay. The Angels. Go. The hungover boys are beefing. Yeah. The Angels are five out of the wild card right now. Sure. Even though they've won one of their last ten games, sure. they're one and nine in their last ten, and they've lost five in a row. The Padres are six back in the wild card, so okay. you want to disband the Padres, I don't but you want to keep them. the Angels intact. Juan Soto is not a Padre. He's been with the Padres for a year. He doesn't have the stock built up like Shohei. He's an angel, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's something about that. He's been there for six years now. It's different than a guy that's come over for a year and hasn't really performed that well. No. Like, this year he's been pretty good. Yeah. So that's different. Those are two different scenarios. Okay. And if you, want, if, you want to, if you want to retool really quickly, if you're the Padres, and, 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 you know, compete next year, you get some guys that major league talent and a prospect back for Soto, I think it's, I think it's a deal that could happen. Okay. It already happened. It already happened. It's already happened. Um, Do you have one? I don't think one of the big hitters goes. I think it's going to be a pitcher. I'm interested in like a cease. Um, and I, I mean, even those guys that, I don't want to say a tier below that, but I'll say a tier below that. I mean, your Harvard Westlake boys, I think they're both going, like Giolito and Flaherty, which. They for sure are. I, I don't know. We, we get excited around the deadline, and honestly. Ooh, let's, let's, can we do it live? Do what? the Cardinals dead? I mean, they've been pronounced They're as. Dead. No one's Sorry, even Cardinals. Cardinals. That's, that's tough, huh? Do, do, we a have a Cardinals, do we have a Cardinals fan here? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, waiting, they're waiting for February next year, that's man. That's insane that they're that's, so bad. They're what? such a proud baseball town. If the Cardinals were 500 right now, we'd have five Cardinals fans here. That's tough, man. That's, that's tough. Mm -hmm. Man. I don't understand. I don't get it. Let's, you know, it's so bad. That guy in the Royals jersey was a Cardinals fan at the beginning of the year, and now he's rooting for the worst team in baseball. That's how, that's how bad it is, St. Louis. I want to do, uh, do one more Get fun it. big baseball topic, and then uh, Dan Kenobia will tap you on the shoulder if you have a question. Um, we just got this today, yesterday. Manfred was talking about pitch clock mm, in the playoffs. Yes. <laughs> I, you hate the pitch clock, huh? Yeah. Um, 
And I think it's an interesting topic, and I'll, I'll actually lead off. I'll keep the mic. Screw you guys. Uh, there's times when the pitch clock is a little too quick for me. Uh, I'll, Friday night, I'll be completely honest. Uh, Jess's, Jess's nephew was in town. Uh, me and him ordered some uh, Mexican bowls of food. Pretty delicious. Uh, got what? there in the middle of the first inning. We're eating, talking, watching the game. Rodon's first start. By the time we're done, just like, you know, watching a baseball game conversation, nobody hit, and that's a little bit of a Yankees problem. It was middle of the fourth. Yeah. Like, I felt like I lost. You are slow eaters. Yeah, I mean, we were, you know, good conversation. Times are high. Um, so, I don't know. I, I understand. It's been great for the sport. None, none of the people wearing the teal shirts here will fight you on that. I think it's overall been fantastic. I think there's a couple moments. The hitters have fought back. Every hitter takes a timeout now when they have yep. two strikes on them or there's a bad call, which I think is hilarious. Uh, there's conversations to open it up in the playoffs. Um, I'm very open to the conversation. I don't have my answer yet because, I, I don't know, I'd have to think about that a little more. But I, I guess where are you guys at with it? I don't think they change it in the playoffs, even though everyone kind of wants that. Um, Do you want it? Uh, I don't know. It's so circumstantial. Like, sometimes you want a little bit more time. The moment dictates it, but I don't think you need to make it a universal 30 seconds or something like that. I, I, I don't think we need to do that. And even Manfred has said, like, they don't want to go backwards. They've also said they're going to keep communication with the players going. I just, I don't see them doing that. I, I don't, man. Maybe, maybe they come up with something clever that I'm just not thinking about. But in reality, it's only a few times a game where you want to let the game breathe. Yeah. The rest of the time, it's been so good. The pace of games is so fun. I know it gets a little quick at times. But I, uh, I never thought that it would be this good and this universally accepted. It, everyone right. seems to like it. I, you know, and... The players, I try and ask every player that comes on the Rose rotation what they think of the clock for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I would say 95% of the people really, really like it a lot. Um, I think you have to be willing to change. I like the rules changes for the most part. I like the increase in stolen bases this year. I think there's been so much more of a showing of athleticism on both sides of the baseball. And yes. I think that's been great for our sport. I think the thing that draws us to October baseball is the passion, is the way that it's shown on TV. Like, it is dramatic. It really, they do a damn good job of telling stories for the most part. And I'm not talking about going back into the mid-90s when Andy Pettit's got the glove over the face and the whole bit and we're staring. Like, it really is dramatic. And that's part of the fun of the sport is that you do get nervous between every pitch because when there's a game being played on July 14th, you're like, okay, we'll get one tomorrow. Well, in October, they're, yeah. it ends quickly. Like, your team could be division champ, and three days later, you're trying to figure out how to revamp your roster because you sucked in October for four days. Um, I would like to see, though, some adjustment. We, they have a huge rule adjustment in the NFL when it comes to overtime when we get to the playoffs. It's the Josh Allen rule. We don't have that during the regular season. We do in the playoffs. Let's adjust the, the pitch clock. We have to adjust it a little bit. I don't think you'd get rid of it, but no, I would go no. from, I would go at the very least, make it 20 seconds per pitch, whether anybody's on or not. And I would even think of moving it to something like 25. What we really need, this doesn't make any sense. It'll never happen. But we, what we really need is like a director. Like, that sets the clocks. No, like, I'm serious. Like this. No, I see what you're saying. Game, but okay, sh shit. It's, There's not like, a ton of directors in sports currently. I'm just saying, like, Someone that knows that this is a moment, so now the clock has 30 seconds on it or, or even 40 <laughs> seconds on it to, like, let the, let so the crowd get into just, it. You're, 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 you're the, the pitcher times a day. and you see a minute go on the clock because it's a 3-2 pitch, two outs. Yeah, and everyone just, yeah, man, think about that. The crowd's like, shit, yeah, now we really have to cheer because <laughs> this, this guy's forcing us pitch. to cheer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't see it I told happening. You, I told you it was a stupid I idea. I don't see it happening. I so don't do we draft? Do we have a director draft depending on the importance of the series? Ooh. Right? I like that. Like, Best director. Like M. Night is going to do one series. Yeah. They'll bring James Cameron out of retirement to do another series. James Cameron. You know that's my idea. I know. That's Hey, that's I've tried little... to tell MLB that for years. Let's get James Cameron down to San Diego. Or what's the guy that blows everything up? 
Michael Bay. Michael Bay needs to take over a series in San Diego. Every time someone hits a homer, a fucking car blows up. <laughs> like, let's do it, man. That's ba- that's what baseball fans yeah. want. Oh, yeah. We do the we do the Field of Dreams game. Little cartoons. Um, Trev, no, I I say we do that tomorrow. Um, <laughs> no, I I I think Rosie, you you. Trev didn't hit a chord. You hit a chord a little bit. That's okay. Where playoff- one, of us, one of us lives in reality. The other, I don't know what land he's in. Play, playoff baseball and regular season baseball are very different sports. If you give a walk in the third inning to lead off an inning in a regular season game, you just go, okay, I don't know. Roll the two ball. Pitcher looks fine. Don't care. If there's a leadoff walk in a playoff game, you sit up in your seat. You're waiting for the mistake. This could be a two-run homer that you remember forever. It's a different sport, and you're not worried about saving your bullpen for the next day because that's just not how it works. That I, I think viewing it, if you're someone that lives in kind of the rigid, well, we do it this way in the regular season. We can't do it a different way in the postseason. I think that's too rigid. I, I think you need to be open to the concept that playoff baseball, the way it's currently constructed at least, is different with the off days and how they do it that – I don't know. I think you can open it up a little bit because not a lot of people are complaining about the pace of play with playoff baseball. Right. I've never heard anyone say that. It's true. Well, you, you, you do hear how late the games go on a weeknight. For you snap for I yourself. was snapping okay. for myself. All right. There I we thought, go. I thought I had That's one That's where we're at, guys. Yeah. What was that? Nothing. Okay. Continue on. Okay. Well... We'll take some questions from the crowd. Dan Canobio, handsome Long Island boy in the middle oh, yeah. there. If you have a question, raise your hand. He will tap on your shoulder, and we'll, uh, we'll talk some ball. Could be, could be anything. So let's repeat the question yeah. first so that everybody it? can get the – Essentially, there are some guys that were hurt or have been hurt during uh, Home Run Derby, All-Star Week, that have kind of lightened a little bit of the star power. What can be done to make the derby a little bit better and the actual game a little bit better? This has been talked about a lot. Uh, and I think even Smoltz came out with it uh, today. I think it makes a ton of sense because the, of the success of the WBC, we all love it. I think it should be uh, USA versus the world mm-hmm. because players really like that too. It, it becomes now like, okay, like it's bragging rights. Right now, I'll tell you this. If your favorite player has been in an all-star game once, they don't want to do it again. It's a lot for them. You know, it's four days where you're supposed to be off, but instead you're, you're like, your mind is, and your body are on for four straight days, doing a bunch of random stuff, getting out of your routine. So as, as much of an honor as it is to play in the All-Star game, uh, most guys don't really want to do it because it's just tough. They want the break instead. But if you up the stakes a little bit and put USA versus the world and the bragging rights are there, I think that, that would improve the game. It's not bad. Yeah. I like solid. that. Oh, I like that. I, uh, for me, I, I think, Trev, you were on this yesterday, so you hit a chord with me. I um, <laughs> wanted to follow up on that. Thanks. Uh, you meant, you know, it's a million dollars to win the home run derby right now. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Mil- million quiche. Unless you're Mookie Betts. Take he doesn't that. care. Doesn't about care. Dollars. Mookie did not did care. Did not care about that at all. Uh, you mentioned, like, in the overall course of baseball, that's not crazy. Like, you know, we... I remember the fun fact going around when Alonzo won it twice. was like, wow, Pete Alonzo makes more money when the home run dirt. And it's like, okay, cool. They could, they could juice that a little more. And guess what? Names would show if it's 5, 10. Like that, yeah. that starts changing the financial equation a little bit. All-star game for me, the thing I keep coming back to, and I, I don't think players are like this too much, but there should still be something after the season. When guys – I mean, think about it. If, if your favorite pitcher goes to the all-star game – there's part of you that's excited, but there's a little part of you that's like, hey, let's not, Hate it. you know, don't need you to empty the tank. Like, we're trying to make a playoff run here that I think if you got guys after the season, the pitchers are already stretched out. Maybe you do it right before the World Series between the CSs. That's a la the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think, then I think guys would be all in. At the same time, I'm a little wrong because I know when players hit the off season, yeah. kind of the last thing they want to do is baseball. Well, what, are they, what, what are about the people that don't make the playoffs? They're gonna sit at home for three weeks and then be like, oh, I'm gonna ramp back up. You can't do it. You do it. I just, you, I just poked a hole right through your theory. Uh, right there. I mean, I, well, if pitchers weren't soft, would that be a problem, Trevor? They they are soft, but I, even I wouldn't expect them to like keep their program up for three weeks into the off season, dude. Yeah, I I get it, but I. Guys, mid-season, like you said, you do it once, it's your experience, and then you're like, okay, all-star game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Okay, home run derby very quickly. It's a must that the home team is represented. Yeah. It was electric when J-Rod was there. That was uh, crazy. It, it was. That was crazy. And as, as fun as it was watching Adley do his thing and then Robert do his thing and Randy and... It was a little bit of a snooze fest when you, even when we were there yesterday, and I imagine that came across on television. Um, they didn't like announce the round starting. No, he it just was looked all, up and it's like, well, no. Vlad's got two. Yeah, okay, it, it wasn't great, and I've been a huge proponent of the home run derby. As far as the game, the only thing that will improve it is what Trevor talked about. Let's be honest. What and what dollar figure would it have to be to get certain guys off the couch? They value their time with their family. Think about it. They their game ends at. 4 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. they got to be back to work, ready to go Thursday night in another town. That's not very much time no. when you guys have been balling since the middle of February. So what would get them off the couch? It would have to be a substantial amount of money. And I'm sure that the owners will be like, yeah, here's more money for you. Why not? That's how it works. It, it's, now what I'm, they would do is, yeah, we'll give you the $5 million you need to spread out, but here's what we want. Salary cap. Here's what we want. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but so it's not realistic. I just... No. Right? I think but it, you're I, right. That's unfortunately the only thing. USA versus the world, I think, is... They I should like probably that. explore That's that. That's the closest. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the Or question. draft. Like a recess NBA's draft. NBA's doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, they've been doing it. A lot of players. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Do it quickly. Speed draft. We'd be into it. Snake draft. Let's do it quickly. Who else you got, Dan? So, Chicago White Sox, thank you. Have been in a tough place for the past year and a half or so with a t seemingly talented roster. Uh, the question basically is how... How big are they going to get plundered? Because Giolito, I think we would all say, yes, we'd hit the button. Cease is an interesting one we've already talked about. Tim Anderson, I think he's got an option for next year, and that's a guy that's led the league and hits a couple times. How deep do you think the White Sox go at this deadline? Well, I think a, a reliever or two goes as well. I think Lopez might go. I know that Joe Kelly, I think I just saw him go on the injured list. For a little while, he was throwing great like almost as he's well gross. as gross he's he is pretty disgusting tim anderson the problem is if you sell right now what's a team why would a team want yeah, tim anderson i, I can't low. he hasn't hit a homer and his defense has been atrocious and i like he's one of the great mysteries of this season so what else maybe eloy goes Eloy's an interesting one. I didn't realize he's a year and a half that's a time when a lot of teams make the move now because right. it's not the pure rental and that guy He's, he's in our trade deadline episode, and, yeah, that kind of opened up my eyes. Like, that's a guy that can change your season's out course. Yeah. yeah. Like, out course? I have, someone, I have someone on our list tomorrow or, uh, on the episode that comes out Friday, but yeah. I can't give that one yeah, away. No, don't see. give that one away. That's too yeah. dirty. Yeah. That's dirty. That's too dirty. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Dan Canobio? So the question is, we feel like Atlanta and the Dodgers are locks. Who gets the rest of the National League playoff spots? Kind of fair. Someone's got to win the Central. Reds or Brewers? Brewers. I think, I think the Brewers win it, too. Reds. People, Reds fans hate me. Reds fans hate me, dude. I believe in their team, but, like... You've become very sensitive. I think I lately. have. I need to stop reading the comments. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so raise your hand if you've left a negative response in our YouTube channel about <laughs> Trevor. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of liars in this room. I don't really I have a good reason why I don't believe in the Reds winning the division. I, I think I'll always go back to, well, a lot of young guys are doing it and having really good starts to the year, mm -hmm. and I just feel like that's hard to maintain. So that's a little bit of a pessimistic take, and maybe they do, and they surprise everyone, but it's also what's the pitching going to be like in the second half? We, you know, we got to get Hunter Green back and Lodolo and all that stuff, and Abbott's been fine, but again, he's a rookie, so... It, to have eight or nine rookies like support your team the whole year is that doesn't, lot, doesn't happen. No, quite. It doesn't happen very often. So you've got your division champs are Atlanta, Milwaukee, and let's just say the Dodgers. Your three wild card teams are. I'm gonna give one to go to the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Is that all right. Go we were it. mid conversation. I'm, I'm going. The Phillies are gonna make it. I told Chris you. Chris Rose was literally talking to you. I'm sorry. He doesn't get out much. Have a good, have a good wee wee. Have a good wee wee. Good luck. 
We're sorry, everyone. All right. Thanks, Trev. Thanks for playing. That's nice. Almost made it 40 minutes without peeing. Um, I'm, I'm leaning Brewers, but I'm just fading the fade at this point. Okay. Kind of Trev's logic. Brewers, Brewers have done it before in a way. Okay. Reds have had everything go right. Brewers have had Christian Yelich be good, mm-hmm. and that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. That I don't know. I, I think baseball just shows its face, so I'm... I'm leaning Brewers. I don't believe in any of it. The NL Central is a hoax. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine either way. Uh, so I've, I'll take Cincinnati. I'll okay. be the dissenting opinion on this. Oh, crap. I'll have a written statement coming out with the rest of my Supreme Court justices in the near future. Uh, wild cards. Uh, I'll go Philly as well. I just like where their mojo is. I'm in on Philly. Um, I think something special is happening with the Giants. And I know a couple of years ago, I was, I was like, gosh, almighty. They're just going to – they're this cute little story the first two and a half months of the year, and they just kept shoving that you know where. And I ended up getting 107 wins. I like uh, Duvall at the end of the bullpen a lot. I think they're going to make a trade for a starting pitcher. That's been a real problem for them. And this is the best lineup they've had in quite a while. So I think the Giants make it. And I – think yeah I think that the Padres get back in this thing and I call me I'm 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 an idiot because I picked them to win the World Series at the beginning of the year and I just can't let go I just can't let go yeah don't be cheering for that if a a kid from Cleveland picks your team (laughs) you're up the creek LeBron picked them. Um, I like Phillies. I'm with you. Um, there is some bias here. I'll go Snakes. I, I am. A, I think there's something to an organization kind of believing in what they're doing when everyone kind of else doesn't. That I think they're going to make a deadline move, and I, I think. I think people ignore the Diamondbacks a little bit, but if they trade for a pitcher, which I think they're going to. I think you're looking at Gallon, Merrill Kelly, and another starting pitcher. And when we get into the playoffs in three game sets, like I think I mm-hmm. think the snakes are real. And I, I think their lineup completely bangs top to yep. bottom. It's really then good. I'm I'm in on them, so I'll go Phillies, Snakes. I don't know. I'm going with some of the same logic. I can't believe the Marlins are where they are. Mm. And they pitch every night. And they haven't had Jazz Chisholm, really. Like, the things you would think would have had to go right with the Marlins have not. And they still just win a ton of games. And I know there's a lot of one-run games. I know the Braves mauled them. But I almost put that as a win for them. Because if you, if you excluded their game... Oh, Trev's back. Great. Right. Let's hear it for uh, yeah, Ploof's Trevor PP. Ploof, ladies and gentlemen. Ploof's PP. Yeah. Uh, we, I think we have time for one more question, it sounds one like. More? Yeah, because we got to get wrapped. Dan tapped a guards uh, fan. Oh, on the yeah. Show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is realignment. How soon? And then do we, yeah, do we realign division after expansion? So the commissioner, I believe, came out today and said once they get Tampa and Oakland figured out, or Vegas or whatever the hell we're calling them these days, then they're going to expand to 32. So Nashville. Right. Nashville seems like it's getting. That's going to happen. That's a lock, right? That would be. That would be fun. Well, yeah, huh? this is actually great. Who like is anybody from Portland? Okay, okay. like. In my mind, I'm like that doesn't sound like a big league city. No, no offense. <laughs> is it? Is it? Wow. <laughs> I'm genuinely asking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Portland just shat down your throat. <laughs> I'm just asking, dude. Biggest metropolitan area without so wait, a sports Okay, team. what does Portland have? They have a, ba- a basketball team? Yes. Hockey team? No. Soccer. So, basketball and soccer. Football, as they call it, in Europe. All right. I've just never been to Portland, so I'm, I'm genuinely asking what kind. I've been to Nashville. It's great. It's, I get it. Like, it's very exciting. A lot of people are moving there. Is that the same with Portland? Like, there's a rabid fan base. Okay. So if we've got to expand, which I, two teams are coming, like that makes more sense with the playoff format and how they want to set up the league. That means Las Vegas doesn't count, right? Because nope, nope. Oakland's just going to move there. Right. I think we all like Nashville. Portland's in play. 
Yeah. Do we think Montreal comes back in? I don't think so. No, we don't think so. about that, but no. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of teams are rowdy about their team. <laughs> I, if they're coming to the Pacific Northwest, they're going Portland over Vancouver. Like, <laughs> and the Portland crowd is hype. Chris, Chris Rose, you are kind of, you have the final vote, I think. Hot spot, Pocatello. Yeah. <laughs> we have it. It's great. There's, there's Charlotte. You Charlotte's guys are all going to be my first invited guests when we have the John Boy Media Pocatello party. Like that. It's going to be awesome. That's a mushroom, Chris Rose. Oh. Pocatello. Um, what? That's a good Portobello joke. Um, I don't know. Are any other cities in play? Or do we just wrap it up just on picket? Charlotte, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Nashville, and Portland are the ones they talk about the most. SLC, Salt Lake City, yeah. I don't know. We, yeah, we brought it up. Montreal, I, w- I wouldn't mind Montreal. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, uh, I think we're here, people. Uh, I can't thank you enough for doing this thank part you. with us. We, uh, and the good news is, this is kind of the start of our day. Uh, we have ref guests with Jolly Olive going on upstairs. We'll be heading up there for a little bit. All-Star game starts at 5. Do I have that right? Yes. West Coast time, I don't know. Um, and honestly, we're going to have a lot of fun for us. This event uh, kind of signifies... Uh, the end of our trip out here. I came out here Saturday. We've been doing a lot of content. We do the derby. We, we do a lot of stuff. It, it is a business trip. It's a funky business trip. Trev gets to touch Ken Griffey Jr. while I'm at home listening to Gwen Stefani eating my Thai food. Um, not mad about it, uh, but uh, all of us are here to have a good time. So again, uh, come by, mingle, have fun, and mingle with everyone, man. Uh, this, the John Boy Media baseball community is, uh, it's honestly awesome. And it allows us to do this every year, which is crazy. Uh, the fact that I can pencil in the All-Star game to my calendar every year. Uh, I thought I'd be doing that center field for the Yankees. So thank you guys. <laughs> that part didn't happen. Uh, thank you to all our team and thank you guys. Have fun. Enjoy it. Thank you. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one of those weird loser Jesus. like concert picture videos. Yeah. Yeah. Food trucks. There are also two food trucks here. 